Hello. Welcome to the midweek devotional service from First Presbyterian Church, Marietta. My name is Joe Bryce, and I'm one of the pastors. Our reading today comes from Psalm 22, the last portion of it, verses 23 through 31. So let us hear now what God wants us to learn from these words of Scripture. You who fear the Lord, praise Him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify Him, stand in awe of Him, all you offspring of Israel. For He did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide His face from me, but heard me when I cried to Him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow down all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This psalm, this portion of Psalm 22, is the lectionary reading <clears throat> for this upcoming Sunday, the second Sunday of Lent. The lectionary is a worldwide uh, schedule of, of readings for worship uh, that is um, recognized by most Christians. So the psalmist here is incredibly grateful that God has brought deliverance from great suffering. So a vision is affirmed to encourage people to praise, glorify, stand in awe, worship, bow down, serve, and proclaim deliverance. And this vision of praise grows out in ever-widening circles. It begins with the offspring of Jacob, then expands to all the ends of the earth, even beyond the geographic boundaries of the earth. The vision of people praising God extends to all those throughout history who have ever lived and now sleep in the earth. And praise does not stop with every person who has, who has ever lived or every person who's living now, but forever expands into future generations. Not just the children and youth of this generation, but to every person who has yet to be born, those yet to exist, is how wide this praise goes. This ultimate proclamation of glory and hope cannot be contained with history or in the present or even with the future. This hope is so ultimate and large, we cannot begin to behold it all. Psalm 22 is also the assigned psalm for Good Friday and for good reason. On Good Friday is when we encounter the death of Jesus, and among his last words from the cross are the opening words of this psalm, Psalm 22, when Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? These words of agony do not stop there. The song goes on to describe the anguish of one who is suffering physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And amid this ordeal, the sufferer is mocked by onlookers. There is no comfort. There is no hope. 
There is only the agony of being abandoned, abandoned even by God. This hopeless abandonment is an astonishing contrast with the ultimate hope and praise we celebrated at the end of this psalm just a moment ago. But the writer Anne Lamott says that hope is born in the dark. But how can one suffering in such darkness move into hope? Is there a self-help book? What about your favorite Bible reading? Is there a motivational speaker? Are there definite steps we must take? Is there a formula? Are there magic words? I believe there are some who at some time, or some even all the time, live in such darkness that the familiar things people say or our favorite Bible verses, books that have been written, songs sung, or even expert counseling and medication offer no way to the light of hope. The only hope I see in this psalm, and for Jesus on the cross, and for ourselves, comes from the cry itself. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This cry is expressed in many ways, but it comes when all hope is lost. My God, why? The cry is one that proclaims that we are not satisfied with the way things are. Things must change. The cry confirms that we are powerless to change and to help ourselves. In the state we are in, we can only be helped by the creator of the universe. Everything else, everyone else, has left us desolate. My God is the cry. My God is the most honest we are when we cry that way. This cry is absolute submission. I am broken. Where are you? I need you. Without you, life is meaningless and cruel. My God, you are still, and you will always be all I have. So help me. Where are you? And Lamont goes on to say this about hope. Hope is a stubborn hope that if you just show up and try to do the right thing, the dawn will come. You wait and watch and work. You do not give up. Well, Anne Lamont and the story of the scriptures teach that hope comes when we just keep crying out, crying out in the dark and crying and crying out. The well, Psalm 22 is best taken as a whole. We cannot appreciate the ultimate praise without also considering the cry coming from the ultimate depth of suffering. And we cannot behold these depths of suffering without the ultimate praise and hope. The praise and hope that knows God has already done it. The praise and hope that is as real as the suffering. Amen. Our prayer today is from Basil the Great or Basil of Caesarea. He's a Greek bishop and a theologian of the 4th century. He served in what we now call Turkey. He was an advocate for the Nicene Creed, which was composed to correct a variety of heresies of the day by establishing the doctrine of the Trinity. You'll hear notes of that doctrine as the prayer ends. So let us now pray with Basil the Great. Let us pray. We bless thee, O most high God and Lord of mercy, who art ever doing numberless, great, and inscrutable things with us. Glorious and wonderful, who grantest to us sleep for rest from our infirmities and repose from the burdens of our much toiling flesh. We thank thee that <clears throat> thou hast destroyed Thou hast not destroyed us with our sins, but has loved us as ever. 
and though we are sunk in despair, thou hast raised us up to glorify thy power. Therefore we implore thy incomparable goodness, enlighten the eyes of our understanding, and raise up our mind from the heavy sleep of indolence. Open our mouth and fill it with thy praise, that we may be able, undistracted, to sing and confess thee, who art God, glorified in all and by all. The Eternal Father, with thine only begotten Son, and thy all holy and good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with us always. Amen. This has been a ministry of First Presbyterian Church of Marietta, Georgia. Join us as together we change lives with faith, hope, and love. For more information, go to fpcmarietta.org. Thank you and have a blessed day.